The Green Bay Packers couldn't have chosen a better time to make the transition to Jordan Love than 2023. Here's five reasons why Jordan is gonna be successful because of that transition timeline. So first off, Jordan's gonna be successful because the Packers have a supportive fan base around him. You know, I mean, some people will say, yeah, Packers fans are supportive regardless. But ultimately, you look back at when Rodgers took over from Favre, there was a lot of contention around that decision. You know, Favre retired. Naturally, we're moving on to Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. But then Favre wanted to come back and Favre unretired. You know, we've had a lot in you know, the last several off seasons, as was similar to, you know, Favre, where Favre was, you know, kind of hemming and hawing over whether or not he wanted to retire, you know, the years leading up to when he eventually did. But, you know, Aaron Rodgers has been kind of, you know, malcontent in the Green Bay situation for a number of years now. And I think that's worn on the fan base. You know, there's still a lot of fans who are you know, Rodgers loyalists. But ultimately, I think there's as many, if not possibly more, that were just kind of ready to move on from the circus that was the Aaron Rodgers show every offseason, not knowing whether or not he was going to come back, not hearing any actual news from Aaron Rodgers about his, you know, situation, not until, you know, late into the offseason most years. So I think the fan base was ready to move on. There's not that same level of you know, consternation or vitriol around Jordan Love as a starting quarterback. I think more of the fan base is, you know, there, understands the circumstances, and is kind of willing to give Jordan Love a little bit of a leash. You know, it's easy to say that right here, you know, mid-May, but, you know, once, you know, September rolls around and, God forbid, things go south early, there will be a lot of people calling for his job. But as of right now, you know, he's got the support of, you know, I think more of the fan base than Aaron Rodgers had going into his first season. All right. The second reason that I think Jordan Love is set up for some success in 2023 is the Packers have a favorable schedule. Based on last year's standings and where teams finished, the Packers have the 24th hardest you know, strength of schedule. Or in other words, they're essentially in the top quarter of easiest schedules. They don't have the toughest competition in the world going into this season. I mean, you look at the schedule, you know, week one against the Bears. Bears, you know, they had the first overall pick for a reason. Yes, did they make a lot of changes? Have they improved? Absolutely. It's not going to be the same Bears team it was last year. But at the same time, you know, it takes time for teams to gel. So a lot of new faces in Chicago. You know, Justin Fields, while he's a dynamic, you know, gifted runner, still has a lot to prove as a passer. So, I mean, it's not the most daunting of first games to go out there and play. Then after that, you got Desmond Ritter, who's going into his first season as, you know, the preferred starter in Atlanta. Then after that, Derek Carr. It'll be his third game as a New Orleans Saint. So, not that it's a quarterback versus quarterback matchup, but when you're looking at some of this, it's, you know, easy to kind of draw those comparisons. The Detroit Lions after that, then the Vegas Raiders, you'll have Jimmy G, or maybe they won't because, you know, he's got an injury history. So by, by week five, you know, potentially he might be on the mend already. And then you've got a bye week. So that's a relatively easy start to the schedule. As you get further down it, you're looking at, you know, Russell Wilson, who will see if he returns to his, you know, Seattle form, or if he kind of remains in that same, you know, bottom tier where he was last year with the uh, Broncos. And then after that, you're looking at Kirk Cousins in the Vikings, Matt Stafford in the Rams, if Matt Stafford can even, you know, get out there to play, he's still kind of recovering from, you know, an injury there. Um, the Steelers, which I think the Steelers would be a little bit tougher. Uh, Kenny Pickett, you know, kind of taking things over there. And uh, it's not till week 11 that we really face uh, like a for sure top tier quarterback. And that's Justin Herbert with the Chargers. Then, you know, two weeks later after that, you know, granted with some added rest coming off of the Thanksgiving Day game, we end up with Patrick Mahomes. But those two are like the top two quarterbacks that we play in the schedule. And to have 10 weeks, well, really nine games worth of experience before playing either of them, really bodes in Jordan Love's favor and gives this team time to gel and kind of, 
get their feet under them a little bit. Not saying it's, you know, a walk in the park up until week 11, but at the same time, there's a lot of winnable games in there, and that can help build Jordan Love's confidence. Not to mention a bye week in there that will give them some time to reset, you know, maybe heal up after potentially some, you know, early season injuries, things like that, or, you know, reset and readdress, you know, like, what is working for us? What do we need to scrap and move on from, you know, to give Jordan the best opportunity to succeed? And All right, next, I want to talk about the offensive line. The offensive line started last year in a bit of a rough spot. You know, David Bakhtiari coming off of you know, essentially 18 months of an ACL injury and recovering and not kind of knowing how to move forward with that. He didn't start the season right away. Elton Jenkins coming off an ACL injury. And then, you know, Josh Myers, who you would have expected to make a little bit of a step forward and uh, didn't necessarily go that way. Then you're starting with Royce Newman and, uh, you know, some other non-preferred starters on the offensive line as guys are playing out of position like Yash Nye and that left tackle and, and uh, you know, that kind of stuff. But as the season went on and we kind of got to what our preferred five starters were, they really started to gel and return to, you know, the strong offensive line that Green Bay's known for the last four or five years. You know, some of those faces are different than they were, but at the same time, We've had a good, strong offensive line going back to 2018, 2019. You know, so the offensive line is going to continue to be a strength for this Green Bay Packers team. And that is outstanding news for Jordan Love, who is going to need some time back there. And on top of that, you know, it's, it's going to help him having a, a, a line full of players that have played together can help him make some of those, you know, pass protection adjustments and things of that nature as he kind of gets his feet under him as a full-time starter. All right, number four, the Packers added a lot of weapons around him. And I know some people will say like, well, they brought in Christian Watson last year and Romeo Dobbs and Samari Toure. Yeah, cool, great. And they should hopefully all take a step forward. And it does seem like the Packers really like what they have in Samari Toure as well. And I expect, you know, Romeo Dobbs, who spent off-season time, if you haven't seen a video up here, I've got one that I did earlier this off-season about the time and how they were building chemistry, like Dobbs and uh, Jordan Love. So go check that out. But they've got those weapons who, you know, have the value of a year in the system. You know, same offensive coordinator, same head coach, which is another thing that a lot of young, uh, you know, first time starting quarterbacks don't always have the luxury of because when they get kind of tossed to the wolves they don't necessarily have the same regime that they were coming up in you know different head coach different offensive coordinator sometimes different front office even all of those things he has the benefit of the stability that Green Bay has been able to provide around him but on top of that they went out and they added Jaden Reed they added Tucker Craft they added Luke Musgrave shoot um, Tay Wicks they added a bunch of guys that can potentially give him some juice out there as a pass catcher. So, you know, yes, we had some reliability in, you know, uh, Alan Lazard, who I loved, and I, I think we will sorely miss him, especially some of the things he was able to do outside of just simple, you know, like being a reliable set of hands out there to catch. But he was an outstanding blocker, and I don't know that we have anybody that directly replaces that role. You could maybe look at one of these rookie tight ends and see, like, hey, we could potentially put them into a similar position as like a, a flex tight end in the slot and do things that way. But I don't know that they're going to be as good of blockers immediately as Alan Lazard was. But, you know, Jaden Reed, I think he's got some serious juice and I think he's going to be a severe upgrade from a Randall Cobb. You know, I think Dontavion Wicks is going to show you that the circumstances around Virginia last year and you know, we all know that that was terrible. Like, maybe the 2021 season was the Dontavion Wicks that we should have expected coming into the NFL. Um, then you can see our tight ends who are just physically big bodies. I think they're going to provide a lot of, you know, opportunities in the middle of the field where it's going to be a mismatch where uh, safety 
isn't big enough to really hang with them and a linebacker probably isn't fast enough to keep up. So there's that, but not to mention the red zone where you've got a, a six foot six and a six foot five tight end. Like that is a big target down in the red zone. So, and it's not like they can't still jump, not that they're jumping out of the gym, but they're still very athletic tight ends. So good luck in the red zone. Um, I think that's going to be an outstanding opportunity for them. And I think the fact that Jordan's out there, he, I mean, you probably expect this out of any starting quarterback, but the fact that he's calling dudes immediately after they're drafted, you know, congratulating them and like really trying to sink in and get to know them a little bit immediately. I think that bodes well for the chemistry they're going to build. And I think that nucleus is going to be very tight moving into the season. And lastly, Matt LaFleur. Matt LaFleur's offense is a quarterback's dream. You know, he is an outstanding play caller. He has got the ability to scheme guys up. But I think some of that has been a little foreshadowed by the fact that, you know, he had one of the all-time great quarterbacks to play with. You know, and some people will credit Rodgers for what LaFleur has been able to accomplish. But I think at the same time, some of what LaFleur was able to accomplish, especially when you look back at like 2020, some of that was schematic things that he was able to get some guys schemed open, especially you're looking at, you know, Robert Tunyon, who had his most productive season. I think a lot of that isn't just pure, you know, Big Bob winning his matchups. I think a lot of it was schemed up things. Um, and you see that there was more jet motions and things of that nature that were really keeping the defense on their on their heels a little bit. It really gives the offense an advantage. And I think getting away from that the last two seasons has been to the detriment of the Packers offense. So not to say that Aaron is the sole reason we didn't do that, but I think we'll probably see a little bit more sweeps and, you know, jet motions, just motion in general to keep the defense off guard and kind of go back to that idea of being multiple in our formations. So that way you could run a lot of the same concepts from different formations and keep the defense kind of guessing so that way they're not picking up on your tendencies. But then on top of that, I think you're going to see more, you know, Jordan getting out of the pocket and whether that's play action, you know, boot motions, things of that nature. I think they're going to get him out of the pocket and keep him a little bit mobile because that's going to also change the way the defenses play them. And then I think we're going to see a bit more of both, you know, RPO and, uh, you know, some, some more tempo kind of stuff. You know, Aaron loved to run that play clock down to basically nothing just so he could get a full image of what that defense wanted to do. I think we'll see a little bit less of that, though Jordan probably inevitably picked some up from Aaron Rodgers, which isn't a bad thing. But I think there will be times where, you know, like, we'll go tempo and really put the put the gas onto that defense and see how they react. And those are five reasons that I think Jordan Love couldn't be stepping into a better situation in Green Bay. But let me know what you think. Am I way off base here or are you right in line with my kind of thinking here? Um, and if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more Packers content.